Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the LA Wave Options U.S. Market Update. In these recordings, we talk about the news that affects the market and then put it in perspective using our LA Wave charts. This recording will be featuring the stock symbols that you see on your screen now. And remember, if there's a particular stock you're interested in, you can click right on it using the chapters feature in the video. That said, let's take a look at the charts. At the time of this recording, is late on Friday evening, so the futures market is closed. Hey, if you like these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button, or better yet, hit subscribe, and you'll be notified immediately when one of these videos is posted. Thank you. We really appreciate it. All right, taking a look at the charts, you can see the market did finish to the downside today. Pretty significant move lower on well above average volume, breaking from that little consolidation area that we've had right around those June lows. So if there was any doubt about breaking the new lows, it was uh, uh, put to rest today. Note on the five wave impulse pattern that we have relabeled to a wave three to the downside, meaning that any sort of bounce it's likely just a corrective bounce within a wave four with new lows to come. I think what's very interesting about the charts, we take a look at that zigzag pattern that we've been talking about for quite some time. We've put some distance between the 100% extension, meaning we're going to an extended C wave. Look where that 161.8% C wave target is, right there around 341. Does that look familiar? Let me put the LA wave pattern back on. Look where we are. That 161.8% C wave extension in this big zigzag is right in the middle of that wave five forecasted tap box, meaning that it looks pretty uh, high probability that we're going to be breaking down uh, into the 340s uh, in the not too distant future. All right, looking at the VIX, the thing that's frustrating about the VIX is even all this hasn't been able to get the VIX back above 35. I'm still of the belief that it would be great for the markets to have a big cathartic sell-off day with a massive spike in the VIX. The longer we do this, the less likely that's going to happen because if we go back and look at the charts, we're not really that far away from that C wave extension and that wave 5 targeted price. So, you know, how cathartic could it be if we're that close to the target already? So looking a little less likely, but I still feel like that would really put in a solid bottom in the markets. The dollar has backed off just a little bit, but we need that. This move to the upside, and you can see that chart relabeled to a wave three as well. And we look at the uh, moving averages here. We touch the 10 day moving average. Let's see if we uh, continue higher here. We've got a new zigzag pattern here in the dollar. So we talked about this in Tuesday night's Trade Finder. By the way, if you haven't attended a Trade Finder, please do so. We do it every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It's free. We talk to markets, we look for trade ideas, and we have a live Q&A. Love to have you come along. It's a great time. You can sign up underneath this video or go into our website, ewotrader.com. Well, we looked at this and we said we're right at the 100% extension in this secondary zigzag. Remember, the primary zigzag had a target of 112. So then adding in this new zigzag within the C wave of that one, so you're layering zigzag patterns, which I really like. Now the question is, do we go to that 161.8% level? Well, it's not unusual when you hit an extended level like 100% with a 50% B wave correction, that's where you're supposed to go, that you pull back to the previous FIB level before moving higher. I don't think the markets would like it if we continue higher from here. The dollar is high and strong enough already. Taking a look at some of the other markets that we have, uh, we have the, the diamonds, and I'm going to go quickly through these because the patterns all look the same. You can see big zigzag pattern there, breaking the new lows, breaking the June lows on the uh, diamonds with a wave five target below. We bring in the Qs, same type of scenario here, wave three to the downside, wave five lower, breaking the, um, we kind of hadn't really broken that June low yet on the Qs until today. We'd come down and tested it yesterday, but then closed below it, making a clean closing low below the June lows on the Qs. Then looking at the IWM, uh, not in a five wave pattern here, but as you can see that there's the big zigzag. Now the interesting thing about the IWM is we are at the 100% extension. 50% B wave correction here as well, leads to 100% extension, just like we just looked about uh, on the dollar. Uh, but the interesting thing about the IWM is we've not broken below those June lows yet. 
So that, does that mean that we're headed to the 161.8% extension on the IWM? We have a, a little bit of a consolidation here. We hit the 10 day moving average on the high today, so we're not oversold anymore. So if it wants to break below it, it would be a pretty quick move, I would think, because there's not a lot of resistance in the way from those June lows down to that targeted area. I did want to show you, we look at the 10 year a lot, but I thought I would go ahead and bring in the 20 year. People have been asking about that uh, during Trade Finder, so I thought I would go ahead and, uh, and show the chart here. And look at this clean move in the wave five on the 20 year. Some people like to look at it as a balance between, we talk about the twos tens a lot here in these recordings because of its uh, propensity for showing uh, coming recessions. But um, then we look at tens and then we look at thirties for interest, uh, for mortgage rates, etc. cetera. Uh, but 20 is a nice, in between, so it's good to look at that every now and then. Just a really nice 45 degree angle move to the upside in that wave five. Now we're here, right at a 72% extension, right within the forecasted uh, tap box, time and price projection. Amazingly accurate the software program is on LA Wave. It's called Private Source if you're interested in it. You can find out more about it at hubb.com. Great piece of software. Uh, best LA Wave software out there in my opinion. So. Uh, there we are right there. Now we'll see if we get a little bit of a break here. Now the break is kind of a catch-22. I've been talking about this in some of our recordings lately as well, is that with interest rates getting so high, money is going to start moving away from equities and into bonds where you can lock in great rates like getting over 4% on the two year now, uh, money's going to move to that without having to worry about where the equities markets are going to go with all this uncertainty, how aggressive is the Fed going to be, etc. And that's going to take money away from potentially moving into the equities market. So I thought we'd show the, uh, the 20 years since we haven't done that uh, in quite some time. Some stocks of interest, Apple, obviously was a big catalyst this week for moving to the downside. So we had uh, on the 28th, we moved to the downside and recovered back to 150. And I just talked about this on this week's trade finder, which was interesting on the fact that if it broke 150, watch out below, 159 needs to hold. And lo and behold, the very next day, boom, there we go to the downside. And if we add the moving averages in, you can see we are just a bit oversold on Apple with the significance here. And if you didn't hear the news by chance, it was Bank of America that downgraded them. They said they didn't feel that the uh, sell through was as good on the new iPhone and that Apple had canceled a second run to meet the demand, uh, feeling like the demand's not there. So that caused the downgrade, uh, rear downgrade of Apple. And so significant move lower. But again, as I said, uh, oversold. Pretty nice follow through today, though. So when you see that, you do want to bring volume in and see what kind of volume it had. And you can see three big days well above average perhaps we get to the point where some of the selling is uh, uh, is abated for a while um, but I really feel like and this is what I mentioned during trade finder if we can't hold 150 I think there's a great chance we come down and test those lows at 130 I'd like to know what you think do you think we're gonna come down and hit those lows on Apple think Apple's gonna make it down to 130 leave a comment under the video uh, Amazon look at this zigzag pattern in Amazon with a 56% B wave correction, so right in that 50 to 61.8% range, you look for 100% extension, and boom, right there we go. And look at that, six days in a row, sitting with the lows right on the 100% extension. It's trying to hold there, which also happens to be right around the point of this big triangle pattern that we had back in July and August before we broke to the upside. So. LA wave rules when you have a, a symmetrical ascending or descending any sort of a corrective triangle once it breaks out that breakout gets retraced don't always know when it's going to be could be right away could take a little time as in this case but there we are so we're right at the 100 percent extension we have fulfilled the retracement of the breakout from the triangle now the only question left is are we going to come down to that 161.8 percent level on amazon and it just happens to be right there at that big round number of 100 also in the area of the lows from May and June so uh, you could see a case where that could happen but it's really trying hard uh, to hold right there at that 100% extension and as you can see we are not oversold on Amazon uh, at this point based on the 10-day moving average Nike 
Another stock, rough day today. Earnings report not very well received last night. And this is a key here with the big move down in Nike. Um, that significant gap down, so clearly we're oversold short term. Uh, but with this move here, where do we go on Nike? And at this point in time, we're right at the 100% extension on the wave five. Maybe we gather ourselves here for a little bit. But the next area of support could be down around uh, 70 or below. Uh, so it looks like perhaps a little bit of a reprieve. Uh, but I think there's likely more selling to come in Nike. I don't think that's going to be the end of it. Perhaps it's just a drift lower from there. We'll see. Tesla. Uh, Tesla is uh, hanging in there pretty well, honestly. And you can see that it needs to hold right in this area right here around 260. It's been in this range for a couple of months now between 260 and 320. If it can hold there, then you've got a chance to bounce back up to 320, but you think you would need a little bit of a bounce, perhaps that wave four bounce uh, on the S&P in order to do that. Uh, but you know, here's the ominous thing here. You remember this triangle that we talked about? What did we just talk about with Amazon on the retracing the breakout of the triangle? So perhaps just a little bit lower here, maybe a little bit of a tease of breaking below 260 um, before turning and coming back to the upside. But you have to say that uh, with all things considered, Tesla's held in there pretty well. Bitcoin, same old story. Different day, same story. I don't know what uh, else that we can say about Bitcoin. It won't go below 18,000 or get back above 20,000, it seems. It's just been in this range. The one time it broke up, it got turned back from 24,000, and then that's been it. Other than that run that occurred there in August, here we are just playing around this 20,000 level. Somebody keeps buying it at 18, doesn't want it to go below 18. I don't know if they're shorting it at 20 or if they just run out of buyers, uh, but uh, we're making an amazing amount of resistance here at 20,000. Now the positive thing is if we can make a run at breaking it again, and we tried here in the middle of September and couldn't hold it, but if we can take another run at it, perhaps it can hold, but then the negative is there's rock solid resistance right at 24,000 as well. So it looks like we're just gonna be in this range bound area unless it falls from 20,000 and we head down towards that 16,000 or so. But if we hold here, Got a, a tough road to hoe to get above that. And then if it can get above 24,000, there we go again, bumping its head at 28. So again, a lot of stickiness uh, in front of Bitcoin in this uh, crypto winter. And maybe getting into next year and we get uh, moving on that halving, et cetera, uh, can help things out. Oh, well, I thought we'd look at oil. Uh, some of you have been asking about looking there. And I thought we might get a little bit more of a bounce here about a week ago when it looked like that storm Ian uh, that uh, ravaged uh, my state of Florida, but it uh, uh, looked like it might go up into the Gulf and get into the area where all the uh, uh, oil platforms are, the rigs, and they shut all those down. I thought that could give a little bit of a short-term bid into oil, but then it quickly showed that it wasn't going to go there anymore. It was going to turn into Florida. And so that little bit of a bounce bid there has been turned back. And now we're sitting on support right here at 65. Uh, wave 5 is at 77%, so it could go lower. But there is a decent amount of support right in this 65, um, 62.5 to 65 range here. Uh, we haven't quite filled this gap. We put the moving averages on, however, we are not oversold on oil anymore. Uh, so if it breaks below this area here, if the 60 to 65 range doesn't hold, then we're probably coming all the way down in here to 50. Hey, give me a comment there as well. What do you think about oil? Is it going to hold 65 here or are we going to see uh, USO back down at 50 again? Thought I'd add SLV because this is a pretty interesting chart. We have the wave five here. Looks like it's completed and we're going into one of those corrective triangles following the completion of a wave five here on SLV. Starting to have a pretty nicely formed symmetrical triangle there. So it's been a while since there's been any sort of a significant bid in the metals. Is this going to be it or is it going to be a downside breakout? You don't know in these triangles and you don't try to pick the direction. You just wait, let it move, and then you can trade directionally from there if you'd like. Looking at India, the INDA, we've talked about this a few times that if it couldn't hold 43, it would be a pretty significant straight move down because it was such a straight move to the upside. What goes straight up often comes straight back down. It held in there for quite some time there, holding that 43 area, but when it gave it up, that was it. So 
vertical move right back to the downside, but we're sitting here at an amazing amount of support, pretty significant support here, I should say, right there at 40. Uh, if it can hold that, maybe it can mount some sort of a run. This wave four is barely still qualified here for the five wave impulse pattern. If it gets to 78.6, it becomes disqualified. But for now, it's technically still there. Maybe we can get some sort of a little bit of a bounce based on that vertical nature here. But uh, what you're watching for now on the INDA is it needs to hold that 40 level. All right, so that catches you up to date. Hope you have a great weekend. Look forward to talking again soon. Take care, everybody. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.